The events take place in London in the 70s. A woman with bright makeup and provocative clothing walks down the street. Seeing the beauty, the guys from the construction site began to compliment her, but when they realize that in front of them is actually a man, they were horrified. Patrick tells his story to a baby girl, the daughter of a friend, whom he is walking in a stroller. His first chapter of life began in Ireland when the mother left him in a basket on the church doorstep and walked away. The local priest, Father Bernard, found the baby and took him in. Shortly after Christmas came, but Father Bernard was not in a festive mood. He is constantly in his own thoughts and guesses that the boy has been left by his former housekeeper, who looks like the movie star Mitzi Gaynor. Next, we move on to the second chapter of Patrick's life. From a young age, he loved trying on dresses and applying makeup. When the adoptive mother saw Patrick wearing her shoes, she became furious. However, neither she nor her daughter, Patrick's stepsister, could discourage him from wearing dresses and cosmetics. The women hoped that if Patrick joined a football team, he would give up these foolish interests, but it didn't help. Later, Patrick confessed to Father Bernard that he often argues with his adoptive mother. Next, we come to the third chapter of Patrick's life, which focuses on his friends. Patrick was never interested in active games, he preferred picking out outfits for himself and his friends. The fourth chapter begins when Mr. Feely, the father of one of Patrick's friends, claimed to have seen his birth mother in London. Her name is Ailey Bergen, and she is a very beautiful woman. When Patrick asked Mr. Feely who his mother looked like, he showed him a magazine cover with a photo of Mitzi Gaynor. The fifth chapter shows Patrick still wearing bright clothes and applying provocative makeup. When Patrick found an envelope with a check from Bernard, he suspected the priest might be his biological father. Now Patrick can't think about anything else. Once he went to confession with the priest and told him the story of the beautiful girl Ailey Bergen, who resembled the famous movie star Mitzi Gaynor. Before leaving for London, Ailey worked as a housekeeper for the priest. When Father Bernard realized it was a story about himself, he hurriedly left. The sixth chapter begins with the teacher giving the students an assignment to write an essay on any interesting topic. Without much thought, Patrick describes the story of how his parents met in an ironic comedic style. Of course the teacher did not appreciate Patrick's creative approach to the task and chased him out of class, sending to the principal's office. In the seventh chapter, during the conversation with the principal, Patrick expresses his desire to switch from physical education to home economics classes. He also asks the principal to call him Patrick Kitten, in honor of Saint Kitten. The principal objected, saying that there was no such saint. To this Patrick replied that Kitten wore a dress and served Saint Patrick. In home economics class, Patrick sews his first dress and lies to everyone that it's meant for his sister. In the eighth chapter, Patrick asks his adoptive mother for money to go to a dance and for a cup of coffee. The woman grumbles for a long time, but eventually gives him a little money. Wearing a ridiculous bright costume, Patrick goes to the dance with his friends, but they are not allowed in because of their appearance. Seeing bikers nearby, Patrick asks them for a ride for himself and his friends. Thus the ninth chapter begins. At the biker party, the group was drinking and philosophizing about space. One of the guys says they could take a crazy trip through the solar system right now and have breakfast on Pluto in the morning. Patrick was mesmerized by these words and kept his eyes on the biker. The tenth chapter begins with Patrick trying to get the attention of his classmates, but they will never accept someone like him. The priest announces that they will discuss any topics that concern the young generation today, and each student can leave a note with their sensitive question in the box. However, Patrick's question turns out to be absolutely unacceptable, and the priest kicks him out of the church. It turned out that Patrick was curious if a man can become a woman. A scandal broke out at home. The adoptive mother and stepsister shouted him, saying he embarrassed them all over town. Patrick realizes that he won't find understanding here and decides to leave home. After packing the essentials, he hitched a ride. The 11th chapter starts with Patrick is traveling with a musical group. The lead singer of the band Billy Hatchet catches his attention immediately. As they travel from one city to another, the group performs in various nightclubs. Patrick attends one of their concerts, where he has a blast almost all night. He enjoys this carefree life. One day when Billy asks if Patrick has a place to stay, the guy confesses that he left home. Then Billy offers him a certain van. When Billy was going to the hotel to join the rest of the group, Patrick asked him to stay. Billy understands it's wrong, but he eventually gives in. They don't suspect that all this time the rest of the group has been watching them from the window. Now Patrick and Billy don't hide their relationship. The twelfth chapter begins. Patrick often performs with the music band. On stage, he and Billy look spectacular, colorful costumes complementing their image. However, not all viewers like such provocative stage images. Moreover, many people consider it something disgusting and unacceptable. In the evening after the audience ridiculed them, Billy told Patrick that they shouldn't perform together anymore because the guys in the band are against it. However, that doesn't mean it's over between them. 
The 13th chapter begins. Billy takes Patrick to a secluded place and settles him in the van that used to belong to his family. The van is quite cramped and abandoned, but Patrick is still happy that he now has a home. Billy promised to visit him. Patrick immediately started cleaning up his new home when he suddenly found a hidden stash of weapons under the floor. It turns out that the Irish Republican Army soldiers store weapons in the van. Of course Billy is aware of this. In the 14th chapter, Patrick's school friend Irwin joined the Republican Army. His girlfriend Charlie believes it will end badly, but Irwin has no intention of backing down. The conversation was interrupted by commotion on the city streets. Many soldiers arrived after receiving a report about a terrorist act. Suddenly another one of Patrick's school friends Lawrence Feely ran onto the road. A few seconds later, there was an explosion. Soon the funeral took place. Mr. Feely, who lost his son, was heartbroken. The 15th chapter begins. Patrick still unable to cope with what happened, returned to the van, took the weapons from the stash and threw it into the lake. When Billy found out about it, he was horrified and didn't know what to do next. Now those soldiers will be looking for Billy, but Patrick treated it as a game, which pissed off his beloved even more. In the end Billy ran away, and Patrick realizes that it's all over between them. Irwin also can't come to terms with Lawrence's demise. Charlie is convinced that the Republican army is involved, but Irwin doesn't want to believe it. The 16th chapter follows. At night, the guys from the Republican army came for the weapons. Patrick had locked the door beforehand, but the soldiers insisted on opening it. When they saw that there was nothing in the stash, they demanded that Patrick tell them where the guns were. He pretended to be foolish, which angered the soldiers even more. However when Patrick mentioned Irwin's name, the guys decided to spare him and left. The 17th chapter begins. Irwin realized that without wanting to, he had become involved in the criminal affairs of the Republicans. But there is no turning back now. Meanwhile, Patrick told Charlie about his intentions to go to London to find his mother. Charlie understands that it's very important to him. The 18th chapter starts. As planned Patrick moved to London, where he knows no one. He went to an address bureau and found out where a woman with the last name Bergen lives. This gave Patrick optimism and hope. That brings us to chapter 19. Patrick arrived at the address obtained from the bureau, but it turned out that the house was demolished a year ago. Patrick didn't lose hope and continued his search, but it was in vain. At some point, he realized that all his efforts were futile. At this sad moment, chapter 20 begins. Patrick has nowhere to live in London, he has no money, so he stays in the playground. The next morning an animator saw him and offered a job. Patrick sees this opportunity, especially since the man named Bulgari seemed friendly. Patrick received a costume and was ready to start working. It was not as easy as it might have seemed. In the evening, Patrick and Bulgari were drinking at a night establishment. They chatted for a long time, but then Bulgari decided to have some fun. He is interested in women, unlike Patrick, who fell asleep right there. The 21st chapter begins. Patrick tried to hail a cab, but to no avail. A man in a car stopped and offered to give him a ride. Patrick, unsuspecting anything bad, got into the car and introduced himself as Patricia. The man seemed interested in his company, but Patrick soon realized that the stranger's intentions were not good. In the end Patrick managed to escape. After that, the 22nd chapter starts. Patrick spent four hours in a cafe and kept his diary. At one point a stranger spoke to him and sat down at his table, looking friendly and interested. Patrick shared the story of his search for his mother in London. Bertie, who is an illusionist, found his story very touching. Bertie demonstrated one of his tricks, delighting Patrick. After that, they walked together, and at some point Bertie invited Patrick to his show. The 23rd chapter begins. The audience watched the illusionist's tricks with bated breath. Bertie said that he needed a volunteer for his next trick and asked Patrick to assist him. He hypnotized the guy, making him believe that his mother was in the audience. Patrick hugged a random woman, mistaking her for his mother. The delighted audience laughed. Patrick hugged everyone, seeing his mother in them. Since then, he began assisting the illusionist in his performances. The audience loved their tandem. The 24th chapter starts. Patrick told Bertie that he wants to write a book about a mysterious woman who disappeared, and the strange journey led her to an icy planet. The heroine awaited breakfast on Pluto. Suddenly Bertie confessed to Patrick that he sees a kindred soul in him. Bertie knows that Patrick is not a woman, but it doesn't bother him. One day Charlie saw at one of the shows how Patrick under hypnosis was searching for his mother. She considered it very cruel and took Patrick away from here. Bertie followed them and tried to stop, but Charlie was adamant. Thus the 25th chapter begins. One day at a bar, Patrick saw a familiar face. It was Bulgari, who has always looked cheerful. Charlie is worried that Irwin got involved with dangerous people who are plotting a revolution in the country. When Irwin left with his comrades, Charlie told Patrick that she is deeply concerned about her beloved. Patrick guessed that Charlie hadn't just come to visit him. 
Charlie confessed that she is pregnant but doesn't want to tell Irwin because he is only interested in the revolution. That's why Charlie doesn't plan to have the baby. In the 26th chapter, Patrick accompanies Charlie to the clinic to support her. At first Charlie wanted to solve her problem the easy way, but at the last moment she decided to keep the baby. Patrick thought it was the right decision. However, Charlie still hasn't told Irwin about her pregnancy. Patrick hinted that she should do it as soon as possible. Patrick still has nowhere to live, so he spends the night on a bench on the street. Chapter 27 begins. Patrick came to a club to have some fun. Some guy offered him a drink. They chatted and then danced. At that moment, an explosion occurred in the club. There were many casualties, and rescuers arrived at once. Patrick, who was in a state of shock, didn't understand what was happening. Due to his eccentric appearance, Patrick immediately caught the attention of the press. He became a suspect and was taken in for questioning. However, the officers couldn't get anything out of Patrick because he was innocent. Chapter 28 begins. Patrick has written a fictional story for the detectives about his double life. He is supposedly a spy for the Republican army and neutralizes enemies with the help of perfume. The officers were puzzled and realized he was mocking them. But they also understood that Patrick was likely not the person they were looking for. Patrick had a nervous breakdown. During another interrogation, he confessed that he had come to London to find his mother. Patrick wasn't released and was taken to a cell. Chapter 29 begins. The officer came to inform Patrick that he was free. Patrick wasn't happy because he had nowhere to go. Despite his entreaties, the officers told him to leave. From this moment, chapter 30 begins. During the rain, an elderly man approached Patrick and offered him money in exchange for spending time together. From then on, Patrick began to make a living this way. One day in the subway, Patrick thought he saw his mother. He followed the woman, but she got on a subway car and left. Patrick feels completely broken. One evening, the familiar officer saw him on the street and asked to get in the car. The inspector tried to convey to him that such a lifestyle wouldn't lead to anything good. However, Patrick doesn't want to settle into a regular job, considering himself unfit for it. The officer decided to help him and drove him to the club. Chapter 31 begins. This club is one of the most popular in the city. The officer introduced the dancers to Patrick, who would now also work here. Soon Patrick wrote a letter to Charlie, telling her about his new job. Patrick wants to save up money to visit his pregnant friend. One day Father Bernard came to the club and said he didn't usually go to places like this. Bernard told a story about a boy who didn't know his father or mother. According to Bernard, the father loved the son very much, but circumstances forced him to hide their parentage. Patrick initially didn't believe in the sincerity of the priest's words, but as Bernard continued to speak, he realized that his repentance was genuine. Bernard truly regrets not being a good father to his son. Now Bernard wants to rectify his mistake, so he gave Ailey Bergen's address. According to the priest, she has a husband and two children, so she might not want to see her first son. Immediately after that, Bernard hurried to leave. Chapter 32 begins. Disguised as a telecommunications worker, Patrick comes to the mother's house and sees his brother. Of course the boy, also named Patrick, doesn't suspect that the person in front of him is his brother. Finally, Patrick meets his mother. Overwhelmed by emotions he faints. Ailey Bergen brought him to his senses without suspecting that the person before her is not a woman. From their conversation, Patrick learns that the mother's husband name is Jeffrey. She also has a daughter Laura. Patrick couldn't bring himself to tell his mother the truth, and after thanking her for the tea, left. The brother followed him, asking various questions. The visit of this woman seemed strange to him. Patrick couldn't hold back tears. Soon he received a letter from Charlie, learning that she had been arrested by a special service just to get to Irwin. When the Republican Army soldiers learned that Irwin intended to betray them to save his beloved, they took his life without hesitation. Chapter 33 begins. Patrick returned to his hometown and first visited Bernard, who no longer feels ashamed to be his father. Bernard told the son that he had prayed for his return. In turn Patrick said that he had seen his mother. It turns out that Bernard sheltered Charlie after she was released from arrest. She spends her days lying in bed and not eating. Charlie is glad Patrick is here, but she no longer sees a reason to live. After what happened with Irwin, the parents kicked her out of the house. Now Patrick lives with his father. They have forgiven each other. Tearfully, Patrick said that all this time he was searching for his mother, but in the end he found his father. Chapter 34 begins. The father and son went to a store to choose clothes for pregnant Charlie. The saleswomen were shocked to see the priest's son. However, his looks didn't bother Bernard and Charlie at all. For the first time, Patrick felt like a part of the family. The local residents are very displeased with how Patrick behaves. They can't understand how the priest could allow such a thing. Chapter 25 begins. On Christmas night, someone set fire to the church where Bernard lives. He carried Charlie in his arms to save her, while Patrick ran after them. They eventually made it out, but the church burned down. The 36th and final chapter begins. 
Charlie and Patrick bid farewell to Bernard, who promised to visit them soon. After that, Patrick and Charlie left for London. After some time, Charlie gave birth. In the present, Patrick is looking after Charlie's daughter. On the street he met his brother, who said that the mother is pregnant again. Before the boy left, Patrick asked him to say hello to the mother. From now on, everything will be alright. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel not to miss more exciting new products. Also the authors will be pleased if you leave your opinion in the comments.